everybody. Coach Brandon here. This week, we are beginning our study of the side scissor from closed guard. Oftentimes, people will look at the closed guard as a stalling or resting position. I want you guys to get out of that mindset, and I want you guys to see the closed guard for what it is. An aggressive, offensive, attacking position. From the closed guard, my legs and hips have access to Adam's upper body, but Adam's legs and hips do not have access to my upper body. So that means I'm more or less in the driver's seat. Not only that, but because he's stuck in my closed guard, Adam can't even begin to think about passing my guard until he breaks open my legs. So because of that, the odds are definitely in my favor um, that I can attack and get to submissions and get to sweeps. And all he can really focus on is trying to break my guard open. Okay, so I'm definitely in the offensive attacking position. We're going to look at the side scissor, which is essentially two battles. The first battle on the side scissor is going to be, can I get my opponent's elbow across my center line? If I can do that, then we move on to the second battle. The second battle on the side scissor is, can I get my head higher than my partner's head? If I can do that, I can take the back and I can win from the closed guard every time. Those two battles. The way I'm going to structure this video, let me quickly show. Closed guard, please. So just to give you guys a visual demonstration of this battle, I'm going to take the first battle, which is taking Adam's elbow across my center line. Here. And we lock up the side scissor. Now from the side scissor, now the second battle is for head height. So I cut build up to an elbow or to a hand, and now I'm starting to win the battle for head height. So because I've gotten beyond the elbow, I've gotten the elbow across my center line, and I'm winning the battle for head height, it becomes easy for me to height stuff, and now I'm behind my opponent, ready to attack. So whether or not we're winning or losing each of those two battles, is going to dictate how I choose to attack. So I have a quick flow chart I'm bring you guys to attention. Okay. So we have our side scissor, it's made up of two battles here. The first one is to get the elbow across the center line. And we're always gonna do that with variations of two on one gripping. So two of my arms, overpowering only one of my opponent's arms. And as we're doing that, we're also going to be doing a knee pull to break the opponent's posture. If I can take, use two-on-one gripping to take their arm across the center line and break their posture with a knee pull, I've won the first battle. If we lose that battle, if I cannot get the elbow across the center line, we got some other things we can go into over here, and we're going to look at those in the coming weeks. Looking at the top lock, if we get the elbow to the center line, and if we can't do either of those, getting it either across or to the center line, we can take their elbow out and away from the center line, going into the clamp in the inside wrist position. But all this week's stuff, everything we're doing this week and everything we're going to do in this video, follows this tree. If we can win the battle for elbow position. Now on this side, if we win the battle for elbow position, there's a second battle for head height. We can either win or lose that battle. If we win the battle for head height, I advise you guys to take, look to take the back almost every time. There's a lot of other great options you can do, bone chokes, belly down arm bars, rear, rear triangles, etc. But taking the back is definitely the safest, most conservative option that will put you right in the best position in the sport. If you lose the battle for head height, we're going to cover some of, the, some of these, not all of them. If we lose the battle for head height and we only have the arm trapped across the center line, well, now we can sweep them. I can't get behind them, but because I have the arm trapped across my center line, they have no capacity to base out on that side of the body. So we have sweep, slobber sweep, pendulum sweep, knee lever sweep, hook sweep. And then down here, shoulder posting. This is another option I have if I'm losing the battle for head height. Shoulder posting is actually a different variation of winning the battle for head height. So if I want to go shoulder posting, that's going to bring me back up to this category where I can once again take the back. Okay, so that's kind of a, a snapshot of the side scissor system. 
Now let's get into some of the nitty gritty details of it. So from the closed guard here, let's move up a little bit. Perfect. So typically Adam's gonna take one of three grips. He'll put hands on the biceps, which is my personal favorite. Um, so he can either do this by putting his hands there or he can grab lapels and really, you know, we can deal with it either way. He can gather up my two lapels and close to my sternum. And this is also a really good thing where he posts uh, straight to his arm. And now when I go to break his posture, the post keeps him up. And then if he feels like he's losing, you know, he takes whatever grip I'm constantly winning the grip fighting battles. He might just choose to sit back and play defense. If I go to grip, he pulls away, he pulls away, and we're doing this kind of thing. So we need to know how to deal with these kinds of situations. So the way I'm going to teach this video is I'm first going to show you guys several ways to win the first battle. Several ways to win the battle for elbow position. Once I've gone over all the ways to win the battle for elbow position, there are many good ways, then we're going to come back and revisit that second battle, the battle for head height. So, how do we win the battle for elbow position? Again, it comes down to two-on-one -on -one gripping and knee pulls. So in a situation where maybe Adam has my biceps, I take my elbows over my head. If I fight straight into him, his, he can pin me down. So I go over my head with my arms, and I take a cross cuff grip. Every one of our two-on-one -on -one grip fighting battles is going to start with a cross cuff grip just like so. Now from here, my left arm is going to go on and grab the seam right behind the elbow. Now I'm going to use the power of my two arms as Adam resists. I use both arms to pass his arm across. And then I break his posture with a knee pull. I pull my knees to my chest, up over my right shoulder. Here. Now once I have his posture broken, I'm immediately going to take my left hand, reach around, and I'm going to get a lat grip. Gripping his lat muscle. Now when Adam goes to posture up, I have his posture broken. Now, to complete the transition into the side scissor, and as I'm going to do a knee shrimp, I'm going to take my left knee, and I'm going to pinch it inward on Adam's hip, and I'm going to extend my left leg. And that is going to allow me to shift my hips out to my left hand side and getting onto my right hip. And I relock my legs. Now, the last thing I'm going to do to really lock down the side scissor, I'm going to change from a lat grip to a grip on his lapel. So I'm going to reach around, trying to find the lapel here. If his lapel is tucked in and I can't reach it, I'm going to grab with the gi, and I'm going to begin to pull. One pull sometimes is enough, sometimes it'll take multiple pulls. There's one pull, I don't have the collar yet. I get a second pull, now I have the collar. And now I've won the battle for elbow position. So that's winning the first battle. I'll go through that really quick again. He's got double inside, bicep ties like so. Cross cuff grip, elbow grip, pulling his arm across the center line as I knee pull. Locking it down with the lat grip, a knee shrimp, and then we're going to find that lapel grip right here. If Adam gathers up my two lapels, like so. I'm going to come in once again with a cross cuff grip on the arm I want to attack. I come underneath, I'm going to grab my own wrist here. And now I'm going to use the strength of my two arms to break his grip, pulling his arms up and over my head. Here. Now when I break the grip, I'm going to pull up and over, and as I do this, I engage in a knee pull. And I take his arm out to the side, down by his leg. Now once again, I lock down the side scissor with an initial lat grip. I perform a knee shrimp. And I find the lapel. There are going to be times when your opponents are a little savvier, and I go to break, take the double, double grip here, perfect. And I go to break, and he drops his elbow. Now when he drops his elbow, and I go to break the grip, it's going to be really difficult to break the grip here. So what I generally recommend is going through and getting the other cross cuff. 
and now my focus is going to be on attacking this arm here. Okay, oftentimes he's going to be gripping my pants. Don't worry, that's not a big deal. I'm just going to raise my hips. And I'm going to use the heel of my hand to break his grip. So he's going to get a grip on the pants, and I heel my hand goes right here. I pull up with the cross cuff, and I push with the heel of the hand. Then once again, I go to the elbow, bring his elbow across my center line as I knee pull. Lat grip, knee trim, and we go through and we find a little help. Okay, another thing you might do is you might take double the bells. Um, yep, perfect. And instead of grabbing my pants, he grabs my cuff. Okay, this is even better for him. This is a great way to stand up because now if he stands up, I can't hook the leg or anything and I can't use this arm. So if he does this, same thing, I'm gonna come through underneath his arm, going underneath, and I'm gonna get a cross cuff grip. My right hand circles underneath, I break the grip, and I go to the, little, to the elbow. And what do we have? Cross cuff grip, two on one gripping, and now we're ready to start taking his arm across the center as we knee pull. We lock it down with the lat grip, knee trim, and we find a little down. Okay, some other things that might happen. I take my cross cuff grip, Adam buries his elbow, and now I go to pull his elbow across, but he just hunkers it down so strongly that even as I, when I pull with everything I have, it doesn't move. The reason it doesn't move is his elbow is locked into my hip. I have to dislodge his elbow, and I'm gonna do that with a motion that I'm calling a hip shimmy, where I'm gonna be lifting my hips up, by pressing my feet down to the floor, and then I drop my hips. And as I do that, I'm gonna bury this elbow. My left hand is on his elbow. I lift, and now when I drop, I give his arm a tug and a push across the body. Oftentimes, that'll bring his elbow in a little bit, and we might have to repeat this process two, three, four, five times. So I get the arm across. Once the arm is across, once again, I lock it down with an initial lat grip, a knee shrimp, and I find the lapel. Yeah. One more way that we can make the side scissor work for us. I go here. Once again, I take his arm across the center and he bases on my chest with his left hand. So now, even though I'm getting the arm across the center, I can't break his posture with a knee pull. That's okay. I'm gonna use his arm underneath to pop his hand off, like so. Now he's not ma maintaining posture, and as soon as that hand comes off, I engage in a knee pull over my right shoulder, lat grip, knee shrimp, find the lapel. Okay, so. All of these are just the same things happening over and over in slightly different ways. We're getting a cross cuff grip. We're establishing two on one control. We're using our hips to off balance with knee pulls or this hip shimmy up and down. Okay? It's all very similar. So if you guys end up in a situation when you're rolling and you your opponent is defending in a way that I haven't covered. Just think about all these similar concepts. Cross cuff grip, two on one grips, knee pulls, um, hip shimmies, um, pushing the elbow across. All these same concepts are gonna get the breakthrough for you, eventually. Um, and, and you might have to find your own solutions, okay? But as long as you adhere to these concepts, you can come up with your own solutions that can be highly effective. There's one more detail I want to talk about in relation to the first battle, in relation to establishing the side scissor by getting the elbow across the center line. And that is the notion of after. So I'm here, and that's the notion of going from a pull to a push. When I have my grip here on Adam's arm, and I pull across my body, at some point I'm going to run out of steam. As Adam pulls against me and I pull against him, eventually I have no more, I have nowhere else to push, or I'm sorry, I have nowhere else to pull. I pull them all the way to me. 
So once I get his arm to my center line, we convert from a pull to a push. And now when I've pushed, I'm gonna lock my right arm out. So now when Adam tries to bring his arm back across, it's not easy. Okay, once again, we knee pull, lat grip, knee shrimp, bind the lapel. So those are all methods of how to win the first battle. Now you're not always gonna win that battle. You're not always gonna be able to get the elbow across the center line. And when you can't, then we're gonna go into the top lock, the clamp, and the inside wrist, which we're gonna work on in subsequent weeks. But when, once we do actually win the battle for, head, for the elbow position, how do we win the battle for head height? And if we don't win the battle from head, for head height, what can we do from there? Let's look at it. So I use whatever method I had to use to break him across, knee shrimp, and again, if possible, I always try to get the, get the lapel. If you can't get the lapel, sometimes a lat grip will suffice. Sometimes you can feed and grip the arm. If you grip the arm, just be careful not to use an illegal grip. Just don't put fingers inside the gi. That's an illegal grip. So make sure you grab the outside of the gi or grab the wrist itself. So we're here. Now it's time to win the battle for head height. Clearly my, my head and Adam's head are at the same height. I'm on my shoulder. He's on his shoulder. I want to build up to an elbow. So I'm going to use this lapel grip to help me. I'm going to drive my hips into Adam so I can pull my head and shoulders away from him. In order to do this, I need to let go of the lapel. I'm sorry, of the cuff. I let go of the cuff. I come back and I give a pull with this lapel grip. This pull loads all of Adam's body weight onto his right arm and his right shoulder. Now when he tries to bring his right arm back across my center line, it's well caught. If I don't pull with my lapel, Adam can bring that elbow back between me and him, and I lose it. So we lean back, and we pull. Now when Adam goes to bring that arm back across, it's stuck. This allows me, by leaning back and pulling, this allows me to bring my elbow above my shoulder line, and come up to my elbow. Now I'm clearly winning the battle for head height. From here, I'm gonna base my left leg on Adam's hips and low back. So by making a strong leg, left leg, I can take my right hip off the floor by planking my body. With my right leg and hip off the floor, I can pull my right leg through and base on my knees. And now I'm behind him. I can start to either throw hooks in from here or I can begin to break him back down to the mat using a power half and go to work from here. So that's the fundamental method of taking the back and winning the battle for head height. There are many other great submissions you can go to off of that um, that you guys saw on the board that I had here earlier, like rear triangles and arm bars and all that. We're not going to get into all that today. I can briefly show them, but I want you guys to be more focused on just taking the back because that's the easiest and simplest, okay? Um, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll show all the other options really quick. I won't talk to them in great detail, but if you guys want to see them, and process a little bit on your own, you can. My bait, his arm, from here, and back, and I come up. Now, if Adam bases on his right elbow again, if he starts trying to correct himself like so, etc. exactly, I can hook his arm, putting my head in the floor, and I can roll him through an arm bars. Sweeping over that shoulder 
becomes very easy to have right? If I take Adam's arm across my center line, he has no base for his left shoulder out in this direction. He has no capacity to base out over here. So we can sweep him over his right shoulder. So whatever method I use, take the arm across the center, getting out. Now Adam starts to drive into me and he brings his head over my head exactly. So now for me I want to go to take the back, but I can't. First thing we're going to look at is the flower sweep. Now, next month, the flower sweep is going to get a week of details all on its own, but we're going to introduce it here. I want to take my left foot to the floor next to Adam's leg, so he can't base out with his right leg. My right leg is going to open up, just like so, going close to the ground very briefly. I don't want to hang out with it down here too much, otherwise Adam will push it and step over into half guard. We don't want that. I open it up briefly, just to gain momentum. And then I'm going to come up and crash my right leg into his armpit, like so. As I do this, my left arm is going to pull, and I drive my right elbow into the floor to give me power in that direction. So I'm here, I'm trying to take the back, Adam drives into me to stop that. And we take him over with a flower sweep. <coughs> Okay, that, that's fine, that's a great method. Now, an opponent who you hit that on once or twice, or a training partner, and now he drives into me, and now he feels me setting up the flower sweep, and he sits his weight down on his heels and back to his left hand side. So now I go for the flower sweep, and there's no way, he's resisting too well. We're gonna go into the pendulum sweep now. The pendulum sweep, well, is a little trickier, is mechanically stronger, okay? So as I pull and he's sinking his weight back and away and I feel that I can't get the, the flower sweep, I'm gonna take my right arm and as a scoop grip on Adam's leg. Now with this scoop grip, I'm gonna pull my ear to Adam's knee and to help me do that, I'm gonna use my left leg for momentum. So I'm gonna kick my leg out going knee, then foot. Knee and foot. So I'm here. And I might take, I might have to do this a couple times. This is already kind of okay, but I might go again. And again. Just to get myself up into this very good sweeping position. Now that I'm here, I've got myself pulled all the way underneath of Adam's center of gravity. Now I'm just gonna take him over his right shoulder. And I come up with an arm trapped across the center line, and I'm ready to go into my attacks from here. Yeah. So let me show that one more time. Because this is a, this, pen, the pendulum sweep is a very, very strong mechanical sweep. This is not the only time we're gonna see this. We're gonna look at it next month. We're gonna see it next week when we study the top walk. The pendulum sweep is a very powerful sweep from closed guard that I want you to learn and get good at. I take my cross cut. My left hand and the elbow, so I have two on one. I send the arm by. I get to my good position. Adam drives his head over mine. And now I find it difficult to get to the back. I want to go into a, maybe a flower sweep, but Adam's sitting his weight back and away. He's not going to give it to me for free. So my right arm takes a scoop grip on the leg. I'm going to use my left leg and my right arm to help pull myself to a good attacking position where I get my hips and my low back off the floor. Can we, re can we rotate for an angle on this? Thank you. Let's go here. So I'm here. Watch how I'm gonna use my left leg as a pendulum, and I pull myself in my right scoop grip. Let's come up over here. Now everything goes over to my left. So Adam gets swept over his right shoulder, and we're ready to climb up into the mountain and go after our attacks. Okay. So the flower sweep and the pendulum sweep are two of my favorite options for sweeping an opponent who doesn't let me get good head position and win the battle for head height. I'm going to show you guys one more trick. One more method that I use quite often when my opponent does not allow me to win the battle for head height. And this is called shoulder posting. So far when we take the back, 
to win the battle for head height, we've been coming up to an elbow first. We get our shoulders off the floor first. Then we get our hips off the floor second. In shoulder posting, we're going to get our hips off the floor first. And then our head and shoulders off the floor second. And it's going to look like this. So I use a two-on-one grip to send the arm by. I get my lat grip. I find the lapel after I knee shrimp. And I'm here. He takes his head over my head and he grabs, let's say he uses this arm to grab onto my lapel. Yes, and he's going to keep my shoulder pulled in tight to him, taking his elbow into his hip. He's going to stay really tight. Now when I try to lean back and I try to get up my shoulder and he's driving into me and pressuring in, I find it so difficult to actually get my shoulder off the ground and start the process of winning the battle for head height. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to shoulder post. I post on my shoulder. Watch how I'm going to start to turn my body belly down. And once again, my left leg is going to unweight my right hip. So from here, I'm going to stretch my left leg out and I come like so. Now my right leg is off the mat, my right hip is off the mat. And I can put my right knee down on the floor. Now with my right knee down on the floor, my hips and my legs can relax. I have a good base of support for my legs and hips. Next, I want to get my right arm back across my body so I can post. But right now the floor is in the way. So I'm going to use my head to get my shoulder off the floor. Here. Now I can pull my arm through freely. I post. I push myself up. And now we're ready to either throw hooks in or once again, breaking down with a power half Nelson. I want to show you guys the shoulder post from a different angle. So once again, I start with a cross cuff grip. If he buries his elbow, I use the two on one, hip shimmy to get his elbow past my body. Lat grip, knee shrimp, lapel grip. Now Adam uses his free hand to grab my lapel and he's going to stop me from actually getting behind him. He's going to try to pull me in front of him. All right, that's what he's trying to do. I want to get my head and shoulders and chest behind him. He wants to hold me in front of him. So I'm here trying to work my way around, and he's holding me tight. So I'm going to turn belly down and put all my weight on my left leg to lift my right hip off the floor. Here. Now with my right hip off the floor, I can pull my knee underneath me and base it. Now my hips can relax. Now my upper body needs to do the work. From here, I put my head on the floor so I can take my right shoulder up. Right now, my shoulder is down. I can't get it up. I put my forehead down, and now I can take my shoulder up. Post. And I can start to climb up, throw hooks in, and I'm on the back. Okay guys, so that is a really good general overview of our side scissor subsystem. And in coming weeks, I want you guys to know how I'm going to take that side scissor, the notion of taking the elbow across the center line, and if we can't get it all the way across, we get it to the center line. I can go into top locks and arm bars. If he fights me so much I can't even get it to the center line, but he's pulling away so much, fine, I take it out and away from the center line, and now I can go into clamp and trap triangle. These are all systems and attacks that we're going to study over the course of this entire month. But again, coming back to the side scissor, two fundamental battles. The first battle, get the elbow across the center line and break their posture with a knee pull. We do that with two on one gripping, starting with a cross cuff, and then oftentimes pulling the elbow, pass, sending it across, going from pulling to pushing. And from there we lock it down. Um, and then once we've battled, or once we've won the battle for the elbow position, then there's a second battle for head height. If I can win the battle for head height, then generally I, I try to take the back every time. If I'm losing the battle for head height, I'll either use shoulder posting to win it again, or I'll sweep my opponent out uh, over their right hand side because I have their right arm trapped across my center line or if it was the left arm across the center line, then sweeping them to their left hand side, etc. 
So I hope this is a good uh, introduction for you guys into the side scissor. I hope this is a great tool to get you guys started off in your closed guard. I'm going to close out this video by saying the side scissor is one of the most dominant forms of closed guard you can get. Okay? If you can take your opponent's arm and bring it across the center line, you are in the driver's seat. Now the onus is on you to build up and take the back. But if you're never sure what to do from closed guard, try to get the arm across the center line and that'll be a great start for you. It's one of the strongest things you can do. We'll see you guys next time.